Welcome to the second part of Fundamentals of Tooth Preparation. I am Dr. Benin and in this part I will be teaching about the terminologies used in operative dentistry. Terminologies are the technical terms used by the people of the same professional to share information. Being dentist, it is essential for us to know the basic terminologies which are commonly used in operative dentistry. Before going into the terminologies used in operative dentistry, it is essential to know certain general terminologies which are very basic for understanding. Terminologies could be never understood without knowing the surfaces of the teeth. Labial surface is the surface of the teeth which faces the lips. Labial surface is present in all anterior teeth. Buccal surface is the surface of the teeth which faces the cheeks. All premolar and molar teeth possess a buccal surface. Facial surface is a terminology which is used to denote the labial or the buccal surface. In operative dentistry, the word facial surface is more commonly used than differentiating between labial surface and buccal surface. So whenever the word facial surface comes, it denotes a labial surface in case of an anterior teeth and a buccal surface in case of an posterior teeth. Lingual surface is the surface of the teeth that faces tongue. In case of maxilla, it is denoted as the palatal surface. In operative dentistry, the terms the lingual surface and palatal surface are used to represent the internal surface of both maxillary and mandibular teeth. So, if a word lingual surface is used, that doesn't mean that it is a mandibular teeth, it could be a maxillary teeth also. The term incisal aspect is used to represent the incisal edge of both maxillary and mandibular teeth. The word incisal is also used to represent any cavity preparation wall that faces towards the incisal edge. In posterior teeth, that is premolars and molars, the grinding surface of the teeth is called by the term occlusal surface. The surfaces of the teeth which comes in contact with the adjacent teeth is called by the term proximal surface. The mesial surface is a proximal surface of a tooth which is present closer to the midline of the jaw. The distal surface is a proximal surface of a tooth which is present away from the midline of the jaw. The contact of two proximal surfaces is called by the term approximal. This word has a unique importance in operative dentistry because of the sequence in the management of approximal caries lesions. A approximal caries is a type of dental caries which is present in both sides that is in the distal surface of one teeth and the mesial surface of the other tooth. When this type of carious lesions comes to contact with each other, the management has a specific protocol to be followed. So now let's orient ourselves with a diagrammatic representation which comes throughout the operative dentistry. The buccal surface, also called as the facial surface, the lingual surface also called as the palatal surface. The distal surface in this picture that is a surface which is not visible to us. The mesial surface which is where the cavity is extending. The occlusal surface which is the top surface in this picture. And the gingival or the cervical area which denotes the most cervical or towards the apical part of the tooth. 
Thus we have come to the end of the general terminologies about operative dentistry. Now let's move on to the specific terminologies related to tooth preparation. The tooth preparation in operative dentistry can be considered as a simple tooth preparation, compound tooth preparation or a complex tooth preparation. A simple tooth preparation is a preparation in which the preparation involves only one surface of the teeth. A compound tooth preparation is a type of preparation in which the preparation involves two surfaces of the tooth. A complex tooth preparation is a type of tooth preparation that involves more than two surfaces. In the diagrammatic representation given here, the tooth preparation is involving the mesial surface, the occlusal surface and also the palatal surface. In this part of the presentation, I will be teaching you all about the wall, floor and seat in tooth preparation. Wall is a part of a tooth preparation which is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Whenever a student in operative dentistry gets a doubt or get confused between a wall, floor and a seat, they can orient themselves with the adjacent wall of a building. Floor is a part of a tooth preparation which is perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. There often exists a big confusion between the representation of wall, floor and seat. A floor is often described as a wall also. For example, a pulpal floor is often described as a pulpal wall. A gingival seat is often described as a gingival wall. So, there is no clear-cut distinction between a wall, floor and seat. They can be used synonymously to each other. Throughout this lecture series, I will be mentioning all the walls which are parallel to the long axis of the tooth and used to represent the word floor or seat to represent all the surfaces which are perpendicular to long axis of the tooth. So for example, a pulpal floor, a gingival seat, an axial wall. We will see about each and every technical word in the coming part of this lecture. So many walls are formed during cavity preparation or tooth preparation. Each wall is named after the corresponding surface. For example, the wall that is present or that is facing towards the facial surface is named as a facial wall. Alternatively, the lingual wall, the mesial wall and the distal wall is named after the each representative surface. The floor of the tooth preparation is always represented as pulpal floor. Occasionally, it could be mentioned as a pulpal wall also. The walls in a cavity preparation can be an internal wall or an external wall. A internal wall is a wall in tooth preparation which does not extend to the external tooth surface. In the diagrammatic representation here, the red colored area which is a combination of the pulpal floor and the axial wall. This surfaces does not come into contact with the external tooth surface. So, in this representation, the pulpal floor and the axial wall is called by the term internal walls. An external wall is a wall in tooth preparation which extend to the external tooth surface. In the diagrammatic representation here, the green colored area, which is 
a prepared wall which is coming in contact with the external tooth surface so that is called as an external wall an enamel wall is a portion of the prepared external wall consisting of enamel that is the part of the external wall which is consisting of enamel a dentinal wall is that portion of a prepared external wall consisting of dentin usually the mechanical retentive features like grooves and locks and so on are all placed in the dentinal wall pulpal floor which is made of dentin is not called as a dentinal wall because it is an internal wall dentinal wall is used to represent only the part of dentin which is present in an external wall axial wall is an internal wall in tooth preparation which is parallel to the long axis of the tooth an internal wall which is parallel to the long axis of the tooth is called axial wall an external wall which is parallel to long axis of the teeth is represented by the respective surface name the pulpal floor also represented as pulpal wall is an internal wall that is both perpendicular to long axis of the tooth and occlusal of the pulp remember that the pulpal floor is also an internal wall a gingival seat or gingival floor is an external cavity wall that is perpendicular to long axis of the tooth remember that a gingival seat or a gingival floor is an external wall but in case a pulpal floor is an internal wall in this section i will be teaching about the terminologies related to line angles and point angles a line angle is a junction of two planar surfaces of different orientations the diagrammatic representation here clearly dictates what a line angle is the meeting point of two planar surfaces of different orientation is called a line angle a cavo surface angle is an angle which is formed between the prepared and unprepared tooth surfaces the exact point between the meeting point of the external and the internal surface is called by the term cavo surface margin although there exist a number of line angles in a tooth preparation the axiopalpal line angles carries a high clinical significance an axiopalpal line angle is an angle which is formed between the pulpal floor and axial wall this angle must be rounded while doing tooth preparation with the help of a gingival marginal trimmer if this rounding of the axiopalpal line angle is not performed properly it could lead to the fracture of the restoration so this axiopalpal line angle is very very clinically significant an axio gingival line angle is an angle which is formed between the axial wall and gingival seat an internal line angle is a line angle whose apex points into the tooth in the picture you can clearly see that the apex of the line angle which is formed faces the internal aspect that is close to the pulp of the tooth so that is called an internal line angle so axio gingival line angle is an internal line angle an external line angle is a line angle whose apex points away from the tooth in the picture you could see the axio pulpal line angle and the apex of the line angle faces towards the external surface of the tooth that is away from the tooth so an axio pulpal line angle is an external line angle a point angle is a junction of 
three planar surfaces of different orientations. In the diagrammatic representation, you could see the three different planar surfaces are meeting at a single point and so this point is called as an point angle. An internal point angle is the point angle whose apex points into the tooth. In the diagrammatic representation, you could see and locate the internal point angle. The green color which represents the facial wall, the yellow color which represents the gingival seat and the axial wall which is pink in color meets in a point and which is an point angle and the apex of it faces towards or inside of that the tooth and so it is called as an internal point angle. The external point angle is the point angle whose apex points away from the tooth. In the diagrammatic representation here, the pulpal floor which is red in color, the facial wall which is green in color and the axial wall which is pink in color meets at a point angle and that angle faces away from that of the tooth. So it is called as an external point angle. A student in operative dentistry must be capable of identifying, locating and counting the number of line angles and point angles formed in a tooth preparation. The first picture represents the number of the line angles. It is self-explanatory and we could count 8 line angles which are present in a class 1 tooth preparation and in the second picture we could identify 4 point angles. It is essential to know the number of line angles and point angles in tooth preparation. Class 1 tooth preparation will have 8 line angles and 4 point angles. Class 2 tooth preparation will have 11 line angles and 6 point angles. Class 2 mesio-occlusal distal preparations will have 14 line angles and 8 point angles. Class 3 tooth preparations will have 6 line angles and 3 point angles. Class 4 tooth preparations will have 11 line angles and 6 point angles. Class 5 tooth preparation will have 8 line angles and 4 point angles. We have come to the end of the second part of this video lecture series. In this session, we learned about the different terminologies used in operative dentistry. Thank you.